Okay, we're going to get started. So everybody give a big hand for Nikita. Um, uh, Grüß Gott. And um, I heard there's many Italians here, so buongiorno. Um, and I heard some Russians as well. Uh, Privet. Uh, so I'm uh, Nikita, and um, I've been working on a project called uh, Ugly, which is um, uh, which was a short film, but now it's uh, kind of turned into a, a long-term project, which uh, also featured another short film uh, called Fest and some little experiments. And I'm going to show you uh, one experiment uh, right in the beginning. Oh, I think I have to press play here. So, thank you, grazie. Um, so we did a lot of um, um, experiments and a lot of silly things, and th that's probably why the project took as well uh, four years, the actual short film took four years to make. Um, it included um, simulated uh, marionettes, which you can see there on uh, top left, the zebra, so it's kind of puppets hanging on uh, on wires and um, interact strangely with their environment. A uh, lot of mistakes as well, uh, as with the giraffe in the bottom right, where things just break apart um, kind of unexpectedly. Sometimes you can control it. And um, doing unnecessary things like con uh, connecting PlayStation controllers to Cinema 4D, which is a bit stupid because you make yourself a very expensive uh, console. Uh, but then it's also nice to kind of play around with, uh, with the software in a different way. Uh, also build lots of different uh, clips with cars because it, I, I think I guess like to play with cars. And uh, the, the giraffe, it's featured in the final film actually, and I'm going to show you this sequence. It's uh, probably my favorite sequence. It's a dream sequence from Ugly Short Film. Uh, it looks like this. Okay, I have to press play again. So yeah, the film is basically... Uh, it, so it's about this guy, it's an ugly cat. And I'm going to show you how the whole thing came about, because uh, um, I usually get asked two questions. Uh, one of them is, uh, what software do you use? And uh, the second one is, what's your inspiration? And I'm going to answer the second one, because software, it's uh, Cinema 4D. 
I heard there are some uh, Maxon people here, <laughs> or fans. Uh, so yeah, where where did it start? Uh, it started nowhere really, like um, many projects start nowhere, and it's uh, very difficult to find inspiration sometimes when you have, when you just want to make a short film or I don't know build a house, and I don't know how it is with architecture if you just come up up with ideas directly. But for short films, it's uh, very difficult. Uh, you have to start somewhere. For me, this is the view from uh, from our office at that time. So that's where we kind of hung out. And uh, this is the main reason why I came to the office. There was a very good Turkish place next to it. So I came with this shish kebab into our studio. And my colleagues were basically making fun of me because I just came to eat. And, <laughs> and there, this is the place where I tried to get the ideas sit in the main square on the, in Mainz, uh, it's Theater, Theaterplatz, and uh, trying to get ideas uh, maybe with fresh air, but it's, it's not working because you sit there and you look at people all the time and you get distracted, and um, so it didn't work. And it took many years, um, so I was really desperate and I typed in inspiration on Google. And uh, this, this is not a joke, this really happened. <laughs> So I came to this website. <laughs> and uh, on this website, there was this story. And it's called Ugly the Cat. And it's a story about a cat who is so ugly that everybody treats him very badly. It's a very cheesy story, very kitsch. So um, it has a message, but the message kind of got lost on me because it was so kitsch. and. Uh, um, that was probably the main problem in the beginning, but I didn't see it. I was just thinking, okay, I can do a very uh, funny movie about the kitsch story, which can also be ugly, because the cat is ugly, so the whole movie can be ugly, and it can be done very quickly because it's ugly. So it was so many things fitted, and it was probably not the best idea to start with, but uh, I think now I, I know that it's sometimes just good to start with something, because you can never have the perfect idea in the beginning. Uh, so I started researching, uh, started researching ugly CG, and I found this. Confessiamo la gloria di Dio. So yeah, the applause goes to Producto One New Zealand. And, and I think this guy is a genius because um, he kind of mixes this thing of having something where you don't, we cannot really figure out if it's, uh, if it's meant to be like this or if, or if he really wanted to do it. And I think he really wanted to do it like this. That's why he's a genius. And, <laughs> And you can see other things there on uh, YouTube that just follow this video where you can draw a lot of other inspiration about ugly CG. Uh, besides CG, um, other inspirations have been architecture, for example. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure if, if I'm correct with, uh, it's probably 60s, right? 60s architecture, Germany. Um, post Second World War when you had to build up houses really quickly. It's in eastern part of Germany. This is Lichtenberg in Berlin. And uh, cars, big inspiration as well. This is probably the most uh, famous one. And uh, Fiat Multipla. <laughs> and uh, fashion, um, especially 90s fashion. And it's, I think it's uh, having a comeback now in uh, the cool cities. 
so <laughs> this is my trousers that I used to wear in the 90s. And other things uh, that I came across was uh, computer games. <laughs> Especially glitches in computer games. FIFA it was a very good game for this. Um, and Google World, I think it is, where you just have messed up texture projection, I think. And um, so what else is ugly? You have motivational posters. <laughs> and I think they are very beautiful, but they're super cheesy. Kind of like um, the story of Ugly, which, which was a nice match. Um, and they have a message. The message is, is a good one, but you don't really get it. You get the irony behind it, and it's not really getting transported to you. And, but still, it's a good inspiration. And I kept on looking, and I found this. So that, that was a really, really um, inspiring thing, uh, which led to the um, main character being a Native American. And um, the whole Native American genre, with uh, especially how I see it in Germany, and I come to that in a second, uh, is, um, is very um, kitsch and kind, kind of detached as well from uh, its original or origins. And um, for me, it was mainly um, Peruvian street musicians in uh, German cities and uh, YouTube videos, which were like this. So I found it beautiful. I got goosebumps from this. And, uh, and it's kind of funny as well. So I like that ambiguity about the whole thing. But then it has its problem. and. Um, I experienced it when I came with a film to um, to North America, to Canada, to US, where um, suddenly people were questioning these things. And in the middle of developing the project, I also started questioning these things because mainly um, things like these, for example. And if you look at him, so he's still funny. It is, it is a meme that you can send to your friends. You can find it on Facebook in, uh, in a messenger. You can send it as a GIF. And um, even the steer ended up in the final film. But on the other hand, it's, um, um, it's a guy. His name is Iron Eyes Cody. And he was running, or he was the main face behind an environmental campaign in the 80s. And uh, so he kind of was, was a successful Native American uh, improving stuff. But then, on the other hand, he was not really Native American. He was Italian, and he was a stuntman. <laughs> and he was uh, kind of a fake person who is standing for the right things. And the problem that you have with this now, especially in the environment in the US that you have there now, is that it's called cultural appropriation, because um, it's very s sensitive. and. Um, but still, he is kind of um, a good person who is uh, regarded well in the Native American community. So it's a very um, divisive topic. Um, and, um, but it's good because it kind of forces discussions about it. And our person was um, this guy. His name is Red Bear Easterman. And uh, he is also a very fake person. He has a lot of 
uh, stupid stereotypes, um, but he's standing for the right things. He's the good soul behind uh, behind the film. He is the guy who is kind of rescuing the the poor cat, and he has many influences, which um, I find important for me. He has this um, shirt, which is a Persian carpet, which we have in Russia on walls in every flat. And uh, he has uh, feathers, which are a bit stupid because it's uh, pigeon feathers and he's smoking in every shot. So it's all these kind of different things. Ah, yeah, and he's singing a Scandinavian folk song as well. So he's a, <laughs> he's a mixture of everything, but he's a good guy. And I'm going to show you the sequence. No. So, um, this was um, um, the final part of the film. The whole thing started with uh, drawings. <laughs> First concept art of Ugly. So you see the chief there on the right, his first drawings and uh, some cats. And I think it's nice to start on paper, uh, even though you have maybe the very fancy vacuum tablet or something, but it's just cool to draw something quickly um, uh, with your hand uh, in real life. Where it kind of frees up stuff, you, you mess around. And then um, also it's important when you do a film to start storyboarding quickly. and. For me, because I was working alone in the beginning, I didn't really care if people would understand the drawing, so I was just making really messy uh, things and uh, putting in them into order and then also creating um, animatic just for me to see if the timing is right and if uh, the film works as a whole. Uh, put a very basic uh, sound on it and it looked like this. It's just a part of the film. And uh, yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, I've written underneath some subtitles so that people other than me understand it. <laughs> So that was uh, <laughs> that was uh, a really, really lovely clapping after the clips. <laughs> um, that was the very um, um, kind of first um, storyboard or kind of animatic to to see if the film works as a whole. And I didn't know it at that time, so I I had it on my mobile phone. I showed it to my mom and. <laughs> and she does have nothing to do with animation or f films or anything. She's, she's a, a physician or physicist. I don't know. I always confuse. <laughs> 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 but
But uh, yeah, she looked at it and uh, she cried. <laughs> and I don't know if it was a good thing. I took it as a good, I, I took it as a positive thing. So I was thinking, yes, the film works. I can keep on, uh, I keep on going. And started developing characters. <laughs> So this is the kind of base mesh of every ugly character, and it's a bit designing things to surprise yourself. Maybe like um, children, when they draw, they draw things for the first time, so they're always excited about what they draw. And uh, also, I don't know if you know the Russian filmmaker or animator, um, Yuri Norstein. He has uh, his wife, she's helping him animate, and she's very good. Um, She's making concepts for him, so she makes the uh, illustrations, and she's a really good drawer, and she uh, showed him the, the, the drawings, and he's saying that they're too nice, and he advised her to draw with your left hand, and uh, sometimes it's nice to just make things as if you would do, do them with your left hand, and this is the kind of approach that uh, I tried with, um, with old models and also texturing in Ugly. This is texturing. And it's, it's um, very lazy, maybe. It's pr called projection mapping. And, uh, but I think it's also, it's nice because it kind of represents uh, filmmaking in a way, because everything works only from certain angles. Uh, and uh, you don't see the rest. And I was thinking that it's kind of nice to see also the other side, the, be the behind, behind the scenes side of uh, filmmaking or I don't know you can uh, transport the whole thing into life and see how everybody everything around us is all matter of perception um, and uh, yeah so this is texturing modeling and then we had a thing called um, dynamics or animating it worked like this I'm going to show you um, extract from the new film or behind the scenes So yeah, th this is a uh, process, it's dynamics in Cinema 4D basically, and um, I also call it uh, interactive animation because you interact with a computer. It's a bit more uh, closer to maybe real life filmmaking because you lose control and you give some, um, some decision making to the computer. And um, there's a couple of examples that are maybe similar to this. Uh, you, you maybe know David O'Reilly. He did um, a lot of other things besides this. He did short films and uh, worked on Spike Jones's film, Her, and uh, he's a really amazing filmmaker and artist. And he did this game called Everything. And uh, he, so he is basically, he did the game with his programmer and uh, decided to do a little film out of this. So he made, he produced this 10 minute short film and sent it to festivals and suddenly the film uh, became a work of art in itself or kind of a film that was, re uh, that was uh, even got Oscar um, qualified in, uh, in Vienna actually um, two years ago. So it was the first film that was Oscar qualified that was based on a game. And then you have also the guy, um, Jonathan Vinel, who made um, the film called uh, Martin Cries. And it's a um, film that he made from uh, GTA, uh, the computer game GTA. So it's, a, it's again, it's a bit like 
you go into a digital world and you, you are a filmmaker and you shoot your scenes and make a film out of this. And some people are debating if it's really filmmaking or if it's not, but he makes, he tells a story with this, so I think it is. And also you have uh, Google, DeepMind, and it's a process where the programmer is interacting with um, with the computer, and the computer then the AI, uh, artificial intelligence decides what, like, it contributes to what the programmer wants the character to do. So it's it's really interesting. I think it's also um, very interesting because it's still developing and it's kind of going like this. So it's a bit scary what's going to come up soon, but it's also super exciting. And um, for us, I mean, I'm going to show you now how traditional animation works, a traditional um, computer animation. If you know how to animate, you probably know that uh, you have to put keyframes. So yeah, he has to pick up that cube and you kind of tweak stuff from beginning to end. You can go in the middle, uh, fine tune until everything looks perfect uh, like in Pixar. Uh, but I thought it's very tedious process and um, um, I was very excited by by games, how they kind of have any really super cool animations in games, but then I, uh, it's not keyframed. And I was researching that and found this video here on YouTube. And uh, there's many of these uh, on YouTube, and I was thinking, well, it's so... Uh, so nice to just have a character and uh, let him play out the stuff and you don't have to do anything uh, because it just looks cool and you save so much time. <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, I went to do um, ragdoll, these, guys, these things that uh, the characters that fall stairs uh, or in games are called ragdolls and made this guy. So yeah, it <laughs> didn't work, <laughs> or kind of did, but um, so it was both, it was, again, it was kind of realistic, but, and, but it's also broken and unpredictable, and I, I was thinking that it's a nice concept to kind of follow in ugly, because you have the ambiguity of uh, kind of realistic and broken, ugly and beautiful, uh, Maybe it's a lot of bullshit, but uh, I went with it. And then the problem that you have then is how is he going to pick up that cube? <laughs> <laughs> because he has to go... You cannot do it non-linearly like with traditional computer animation because you have to do everything in one uh, go in a linear way. So you have no keyframes. And um, the approach was to make... Uh, marionettes and these work like this so you have these controllers there that you can actually keyframe and these are connected with wires to the character and uh, what you do is you well if you press play then he kind of hangs there and then you can interact with him and that was a nice start and so made made him walk, for example. <laughs> yes, today morning summarized. Uh, yeah, we made some animals as well. King of the jungle. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and you have to come up with stuff like when these guys run and you want to stop them, you have to come up with solutions, like really silly solutions like making here. <laughs> make him make this cube invisible later. So it's <laughs> and again it's it's a bit like working with um with actors. <laughs> so you feel like a like a director on a film set. <laughs> and these guys, they all become uh, kind of, they have little personalities and they do whatever they like. Not whatever they like, but because uh, you have to, you, you have some say in what they come, uh, what they do. Um, you can do with dynamics in Cinema 4D also things like motors. And this is a motorcycle, the first motorcycle that I built and it was exciting in a sense because it actually started driving and I didn't expect it to drive. <laughs> <laughs> and this clip I used, I used probably part until, until here for the film. So this part was used in the final film because this, it doesn't really matter. It's like in, in uh, real filmmaking you only have certain takes that you use, and then the rest, or with what happens outside of the camera, you don't really care about it. So you really feel like a real filmmaker on a big set. <laughs> and you can also do stuff with a motorcycle like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> also inspired by YouTube. Uh, and. Um, so what it does, it's a chain reaction. You have a motor, you have a wheel, um, and then the, the carousel, everything is driven by each other, and then you have the guy in there, and he has a shirt on, and the shirt is having very low sampling. I didn't know about sampling at that point, so just freaked out and messed everything up. Uh, and these, kind of, these things, that, these are unexpected things, but sometimes these things are super nice. And... Uh, so mistakes and errors are a big concept behind um, the whole project. And uh, this thing here, it's, uh, I opened this file on, uh, in the morning on one day when I saved it uh, in the very late at night and I pressed play. <laughs> so, I think it happened because you had the, because the cursor or the the timeline slider was in the middle, and it, the calculation just didn't. I don't know what it happened, but this is what you end up with sometimes. And then you have um, bugs in software. Um, even in Cinema 4D, you have bugs. And this is a hair bug. So it kind of unexpectedly makes hair grow. And I, I'm a beta tester in cinema, and uh, I think I, I reported that bug, and they fixed it very quickly. <laughs> but I, I like that bug, so I kept that uh, broken version of Cinema 4D, so I can still reproduce, I hope. Um, so for these things, you are not responsible, um, but uh, you are responsible for other things. And this error came from wrong baking, and baking is... <laughs> so, I think this is a nice opportunity to describe what baking is. Uh, probably some of you know what it is. Uh, you can bake bread, you can bake uh, <laughs> textures, you can bake... Uh, animations and animation is important in simulation because every simulation can turn out different. Um, sometimes the calculations are so complicated you have so many things happening that uh, that they kind of that you have every time a different outcome and if you do a film you want one thing to be final so if you want to render uh, the simulation in the end uh, you don't want it to be unexpected. So what you do is you bake stuff, you bake a simulation and you have probably many 
bakes of one sequence. And uh, here, what, what went wrong is I baked maybe part of the uh, timeline for, for the glasses and part another part for the shirt, so he kind of went to the beach. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, what I mean by different outcomes. Uh, this guy, he's setting up a drone. And so you have three different outcomes, even though the whole thing is uh, keyframed in the controls in the same way. <laughs> yeah, it was a very difficult uh, pick in the end, which one to take. So um, controlling of um, uh, controlling is very important when you simulate because if you have a story to tell, you um, want um, you want to have some control, and um, so this is one control of a car, for example. So we built this little setup there, and it has a, a, a low ride mechanism. <laughs> it's also a reason why the whole project took four years because you, you do these things because you're alone, nobody's sitting behind you and tells you the film has to be done. Uh, so you make the low riding thing. <laughs> and um, other vehicles that we made, this is a camera dolly. And um, this camera dolly, it was tested for uh, an MTV ident. This is the MTV ident. Oh, let me try again. Yeah, that's the cameraman. <laughs> and uh, he has been used in many shots of uh, Ugly. And um, uh, so he's kind of a shaky um, camera <laughs> person, uh, which uh, you can also see in some parts of the film. And here he is um, recording the scene, <laughs> the playground scene. Oh, I think, uh, no, it's gone. I think my PowerPoint just crashed. Yeah, it did crash. Okay. Toilet break. <laughs> okay, we're back. So, uh, here he is uh, recording the playground uh, sequence. <laughs> and um, now the final, in the final one you can actually see his shadow. For the leaves that you can see on the on the ground, uh, there's a setup, which was a little tornado setup. So you have these ventilators or fans that are rotating depending on how quick you move your mouse or how you set the keyframes for these things, and it's a bit unexpected. Uh, it's a bit like playing a computer game. You have to be really quick with your mouse to, to get a really cool movement of the leaves. Uh, 
and uh, it's using aerodynamics in Cinema 4D, uh, and it's the, those are really cool because you can make, uh, for example, a drone, which is flying by itself. So you have four fans that you can control um, the speed of, and then depending on the speed of every fan, you can um, change the direction where the drone is flying. It's a bit out of control sometimes, but uh, what you can also do is you can hook up a um, PlayStation controller. And it's using a plugin that's called, uh, I'm not sure if they still make it, it's uh, Control 4D and uh, Motion Enjoy. You need those two to actually hook up the controllers. And um, if you pay, or if you used to pay, I'm not sure if they really make those again, but I, mean, I need to check it. If you pay 50 euros, you can hook up two controllers. And then you have one guy who is flying the drone and one who is recording. So you have a real drone team inside of Cinema 4D. <laughs> and um, our drone team for the second movie, this is uh, Philip and Martin, and we recorded textures for, uh, of Lichtenberg in Berlin uh, for um, making a film that... Uh, was inspired by this. <laughs> and uh, so this is, this is uh, gabbing or raving in the 90s. And I, I grew up with it. Uh, I was living in a, in a uh, neighborhood where we had a, one guy, he was putting out his ghetto blaster on the window and he was blasting the, the playground in the back of his house with with, I think it was techno heads, I want to be a hippie or something at that time. And so when I watched this on YouTube, it was like a um, very nostalgic uh, feeling. And this is also probably not quite nostalgic, but when I was in Russia, I was living there 10 years, we used to climb on houses and do stupid things. Um, this, we didn't do this. Um, but uh, I'm going to show you the process behind the film and I'm going to show you the, the final thing later. It's, uh, so when you, have, when you want to build, construct buildings, then uh, you, you use two photographs, for example, and then you project them from one specific angle so it matches up and then you kind of build around it. And uh, it's a very quick way of, of doing stuff. You just need to find uh, the right uh, perspective of the camera, which is the most tricky part. And then you can can um, build environments in a really intuitive way, and I think they use this kind of stuff for for feature films, for backgrounds. We used it for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, once you have these, um, uh, yeah, they work from one angle basically, and and then all the other angles are a bit distorted, and then you. Start when you have the environment, you um, animate the characters, and it works like this. So, if you want to make him dance or do uh, or gab, then uh, you start maybe with his shoulders, you start to give, give him a rhythm, and then um, legs, and you see the keyframes of the controllers there in the bottom, so he's tapping now. Then include the arms. It's a lot of experimenting. Um, and you have lots of possibilities. Once you change, you can change very tiny keyframes, and then he's doing completely different stuff. Um, so, yeah, here he is raving. And uh, you give him clothes. So, these are the clothes that we used. That's the final one. <laughs> he has a 90s haircut. And, and then you put all the characters that you've made into the, the environment. So here you see how everything is kind of distorted and there are the guys. Um, and it's still a bit empty, so you start uh, making little props, like a sausage emitter. 
the ice cream boy. The sad ice cream boy. Um, hot dogs, you test the hot dogs. It's uh, soft body dynamics, really cool. <laughs> and you make a, <laughs> you make this. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also have to test. Um, Yes, was the first test. Um, and do uh, an unnecessary thing which didn't end up in the final film, which was this. Um, yeah, she died many deaths, but this, this was uh, the final thing. And I'm going to show you the final film uh, called Fest. <laughs> so I think this is it. Uh, I have um, some uh, things that I want to say in the end that are important. So, <laughs> so basically, um, do your own stuff, uh, free time for it. Um, <laughs> don't uh, get hung, hung up on uh, software or plugins. Uh, also do things beside um, architecture and um, you don't need uh, the perfect idea to start with and uh, you have to give it time to develop and that's it.